What's up guys, my name is Ace, and yesterday we got a massive patch for Black Ops Cold War, and in this there was a lot of weapon balancing, tons of bug fixes, and some other additions and changes that were made. And in today's video, we're going to be doing what I always do, and this is sharing all of these changes in great detail. I'm not just going to sit here and read the patch notes to you, I'm actually going to show you before and after, whenever possible, and whatever it makes sense. So, let's just hop right into it and start it off with the weapon balancing. First up, the FFAR, this one got a few nerfs. The first thing they did to it is they nerfed the damage from 28 down to 27 at close ranges, and this might seem like a really insignificant change, and in a lot of ways it is. This doesn't change the number of shots to kill, it's still going to be a 6 shot kill up close. However, what this does is it now makes it so you need 2 headshots mixed in with body shots in order to reduce the number of shots it takes to kill up close. Whereas pre-patch, you only needed one single headshot mixed in with body shots to get that 5-shot kill. But next up with the FFAR, we got a range nerf as well, and this was a pretty noticeable range nerf. It went from 38 meters down to about 25 meters. So this gun is going to be much less effective at range because on top of this, we also got a pretty significant recoil nerf. As you can see here, pre-patch, our recoil with the FFAR is basically straight vertical and extremely easy to control, especially for a really fast fire rate gun. That's very, very easy to control. But post-patch, as you can see here, they added a ton of horizontal recoil. So now it's going to kick upwards and to the right initially, and then it will start correcting itself and come back to the left toward the end of the magazine. So overall, it appears the FFAR was significantly overperforming at longer ranges, which does line up with my experiences. Normally, these high fire rate ARs, they're designed to excel up close while not being the dominant AR at long ranges. And the FFAR was just too versatile pre-patch, so now they've toned it down, especially for those longer ranges. But moving on to the tactical rifles, both of the burst rifles got nerfs. And starting it off with the M16, our range values have been nerfed from 25 meters down to 21 meters. Then our shooting movement speed, so the movement speed we get while the gun is actually being fired, this was reduced as well, so you're not going to be able to strafe back and forth in a fight as effectively. Then on top of that, our sprint to fire time or sprint out time has also been nerfed very slightly, this is hardly even noticeable. And then possibly most importantly out of these nerfs, our burst delay was increased by 50 milliseconds, which makes this gun less forgiving if you don't get that one burst kill. And on top of this, they also mentioned that they rebalanced the fire rate bonuses for the barrel attachments. Unfortunately, I didn't have any pre-patch values for this, so I can't tell you exactly what changed. But those barrels should be a bit less effective when it comes to fire rate. And they've also slightly reduced the effectiveness of laser attachments on your hip fire for the M16. As for the AUG, this one received pretty much the exact same nerfs as the M16, with just some different values. So our range went from 38 meters down to about 30 meters. Our shooting movement speed, that was also reduced, just like the M16. Our sprint to fire time was nerfed by the same amount. And our burst delay also got an increase of 50 milliseconds. To top that off, they did the same thing where they rebalanced the fire rate bonuses for barrels, and they slightly reduced the effectiveness of laser attachments. Now, I did want to share my opinion on these nerfs to the burst guns. I definitely feel that these guns were significantly overperforming, and they did need to be nerfed. However, I don't really think that the nerfs they made here really target the root issue, and this is the fact that they can get those really consistent one burst kills, which gives them a time to kill that no other gun in the game can properly compete with. Like, it's not even remotely close. Your time to kill with these guns with a one burst is 150 milliseconds, and most other guns kill in about 300 milliseconds. So aside from reducing the range values a little bit, it's not really going to change how effective these guns are at getting that one burst kill in close range situations. Now, of course, I'm willing to give it a shot and get some playtime in to see how they perform after this buff, but like I said, I just don't think this really targeted the root issue with these two guns. But anyway, let's move on to the next gun. This is the Type 63, and this just got a simple rate of fire buff, which was great. It went from 327 rounds per minute up to 361 rounds per minute. This buff also applies to the barrels that improve your fire rate, so you can get even higher than 361 rounds per minute now with this gun. And we saw a really similar story with the DMR-14. That one also got a rate of fire increase from 361 rounds per minute up to 400 rounds per minute. And this is great news in my opinion. I personally thought the Type 63 was a great gun pre-patch, but now it's even better. And with the DMR, I didn't really like it too much pre-patch. However, I am looking forward to getting some more playtime with it now that it has this buff. But now let's move on to the only LMG that was changed in this update, and this is the M60, which got a couple buffs. The first buff was to its range, and this one went from 50 meters all the way up to 76 meters, 
which is way off the chart, so I'm not even going to show you the range chart here because it's just such a long range. Essentially, you're going to be really hard pressed to find a line of sight beyond the three shot kill range of the M60. Next up, we have the sniper rifles, and all of the sniper rifles got the same nerf, so this applies to all three of them. First up, our shooting movement speed was reduced, and apparently this is intended to make each shot feel more powerful than it really is. Then they also slightly nerfed the sprint to fire time, and this was basically just to better match the animation of the sprint out time with the sniper rifles. And keep in mind, like I've mentioned before, the stated sprint out times in these in-game stats, they're not actually accurate. So the sniper rifle sprint out time isn't actually this slow, it's quite a bit faster than this. But there was a slight nerf just to better match the animations. At the end of the day, these changes don't really impact the effectiveness of the sniper rifles at all. I've seen a lot of outrage and backlash in the community from some of the snipers because they did technically nerf the sniper rifles, but in reality, this doesn't really change the effectiveness of the guns. However, they also mentioned in the patch notes that they fine-tuned various barrel attachments that improve your idle sway in order to provide a more unique feel on each of the sniper rifles. And with this, I haven't done any pre-patch testing on this, so unfortunately, I can't show you the before and after or anything. Just know they've adjusted some of the idle sway with the different barrels. At the end of the day, the sniper rifles should feel pretty much the same as pre-patch though. But moving on, let's get into the Magnum, and with the Magnum, they buffed the range from 15 meters up to 19 meters. And on top of this, they slightly buffed the fire rate. This is hardly noticeable, but it went from 171 rounds per minute up to 180 rounds per minute. And then finally, for weapon balancing changes, the Gallo 12 shotgun, this got a slight nerf to its damage between 5.8 meters and 7.7 .7 meters. Now at this point in the game's life cycle, I haven't done my detailed shotgun testing yet, so I don't have the exact values on this, I don't know what it changed from, but just know, within that window, it looks like the Gallo is going to be a little bit less effective. And that wraps it up for all of the weapon changes that were made with this update, however, score streaks also got some rebalancing, and I'm just going to fly through this fairly quickly, because you can see it for yourself. The combat bow got a slight nerf, so now it spawns with 4 arrows instead of 5. The care package is going to cost a little bit more to earn, so that was nerfed. The sentry turret was buffed a little bit, it's now going to be slightly easier to earn. The napalm strike was nerfed, so it requires a bit more score. Air patrol was buffed, it requires less score to earn. And then the artillery was also nerfed, this is going to require more score now to earn that. As for the cruise missile, the war machine, and the attack chopper, these are all going to cost you more score to earn now. However, the attack chopper also got some buffs to it. So with this, they increased the damage from 50 to 75. They also increased the health from 4,500 up to 5,000. And they made the attack chopper a little harder to shoot because it's not going to stay in the same position for as long anymore. It's going to be roaming around the map a lot more, which is going to make it harder to shoot at and harder to take down. Now, it's also worth mentioning they reduced the screen shake that the attack chopper would cause, which is technically a nerf, but I think it's more of just a quality of life improvement more than anything. But finally for score streaks, the VTOL Escort got a buff to its cost, as well as to the burst length with the turret. So you're going to be able to burst fire that turret longer, and there's going to be a reduced cooldown time between bursts as well. And then finally for the Chopper Gunner, they increased the cost, so they nerfed it there, but they also buffed it by reducing the movement on the gun while firing, which is awesome. Pre-patch your screen would just be shaking all over the place, and it was a really jarring experience to be trying to control a Chopper Gunner. And post-patch, it's much smoother, and I definitely think this buff was worth the trade-off of now requiring an extra 500 score to earn the Chopper Gunner. So there we have it, that wraps it up for these score streak changes as well, and I'm really liking what I'm seeing so far, at least on paper. Now let's move on to just a bunch of miscellaneous things that changed with this update. One really big one is they added response curve types for controllers in the settings. So you can now choose between standard, linear, or dynamic, just like in Modern Warfare, and I think a lot of people will be happy to see that. Next up, the Tomahawks can be thrown immediately at the start of the round. You don't have to wait for that grenade cooldown, which makes a lot of sense. And now we're going to be able to go for those cross-map Tomahawks right at the beginning of the round. Then there was just a really long list in the patch notes of stability improvements, and there should be far fewer instances of crashing for those people that have been experiencing crashing in-game. Also, they apparently fixed the issue with camo challenges, appearing like you didn't have them unlocked even though you did. Pre-patch, all you had to do is restart your app and then you would see your progress again. But it looks like they've taken care of that now, so you will no longer have to restart your app just to see your camo progress. Next, there was an issue that was happening for a lot of people where their reticle would end up being upside down if they were using an optic. That has apparently been worked out as well. And then there's a couple other things that I've noticed in-game that I didn't see stated in the patch notes here. 
First up, there were some movement changes. They've changed up the way the slide canceling seems to work. Based on how everything feels, it seems like they've added more of a delay or more of a penalty to your movement speed after sliding, especially if you're trying to slide multiple times in short succession. On top of this, they also sped up the amount of time it takes to use equipment. So if you're throwing a C4 or a Semtex, for instance, you will now throw them a little bit faster than you could pre-patch. And again, I didn't see this one stated in the patch notes. And with that, that's pretty much it. That's gonna wrap it up for all of the main things that changed with yesterday's update. And when it comes to my opinion on this, I think there's a lot of really nice changes in here and definitely a good step in the right direction, especially with all of the crashing issues that they've been working out. I'm sure there's probably still some more crashing issues or other performance related issues that will need to be worked out over time. But based on what I'm seeing so far, this patch does seem to be a great step in the right direction, and I hope they keep this momentum up. I hope we continue to see patches like this over the coming weeks, so we can get this game into the best shape possible going into Season 1. Of course, that is just my opinion on this. I'd like to know in the comments section below, what did you guys think of this update overall? What are some of the things you really liked about the update? What are some of the things you maybe didn't like about this update? Just let me know those thoughts in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.